Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Misko. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas for anybody out there celebrating it. Today, we have Monk Monday number 134, maybe. I have no idea. I think it's 134, 135. And for those who don't know what this is, you send any gameplay you have to this email right here. And I critique it. I review it. I've done twos, threes, RBGs, solo shuffle, of course, Mythic Plus I've done. I've even done some raids, Miss Weaver, Windwalker, any MMR, any Keystone level, any kind of experience. It doesn't matter. Please send in your gameplay. If you're too shy or you don't want to send your gameplay in, that's fine. If you want to improve at WoW, I would highly recommend recording your gameplay anyway and watching it back. 100% one of the best ways to get better at the game is to watch your gameplay back and see what you did wrong. So with that said, we have Neil Tour today or Monk Tour uh, who says, I've been waiting to... I've been wanting to send some games in for a long time, but I've been trying to Trying to been trying too hard to record a perfect game to critique. There's no perfect game, I promise. I even to this day, whether it's shuffle twos, threes, RBGs, I still make mistakes. So do not worry. Decide so just to record a handful of games and send them off. That's perfect. I would really appreciate you taking a look at these games for me and giving me some feedback. I've been improving a lot in Dragonflight. It feels like I'm having uh, hitting a bit of a wall. These were also my first games today, so you see some silly mistakes like torpedo in the wrong direction and such. That is. <laughs> You're not the only one that makes that mistake. I can promise you that. I have made that mistake plenty of times. If you want some additional background, I, <clears throat> of course. Uh, this is a random person, uh, so we're not in voice or anything. That's fine. Twos, I don't really use voice either, so don't even worry about that. I played WoW since TBC, but only ever did PvE until Season 3 of Shadowlands. Uh, same. I only did. I only PvE'd until BFA, actually. Around Season 1 of BFA was when I first started to just... I swapped off of my realm in my PvE guild. I quit. And I swapped realms. I went from Alliance to Horde to go Orc because Orc was way better at the time. And I committed to PvP, so I can I can completely relate. I main DK until late Dragonflight Season 1. That is a bit of a change. DK to Mistweaver is much different. I swapped from Resto Druid to Mistweaver. So healing is a lot different, obviously, than playing DK. Uh, started healing mainly in Dragonflight Season 2. Got 2100 in RBGs last season, which is freaking insane. Uh, just missed in twos and that 2052. That is still... It took me three seasons to get to 1750. So you are doing much better than me. I'm, I'm trying um, hard this season to improve and one at 200 and twos and threes. Thanks, Neil. Well, I have you. I got you. Yes, of course. And of course, <clears throat> each season is different. So some seasons it's easier to hit certain ratings. Uh, but 2100 in twos is uh, twos and threes is a really good plan. RBGs are also a lot of fun as well. So uh, I'm just going to go through all your games. I think we have a full, what well, we got eight games in this playlist. Let's just run through all of them. I do love twos. I am a twos tryhard as well. So, you know, I am more than happy. It looks like we are casting Miss Weaver. Now, obviously, technically, Fist Weaving with the Warrior is probably better. Uh, loving this. It seems like your talent build is fine. I don't see anything crazy or different about it. Love, love Chief Serenity. Love Men Proliferation. And it looks pretty good. Good. Yeah, I got no complaints on the talent build here. Running Chrysalis. Yep. No, we're, we're looking good. Uh, 29 Haste. 100. <clears throat> I have just about the same stats as you. I think that these were sent two weeks ago, so obviously the green staff. Um, trinkets are a little, little out of date. Looks like we have the... What is this? No, no. Is this tier set on the shoulders and chest? I don't need to take a look at that, but... Yeah, we're looking good. Gear looks fine. Looks like we have the war mode bracers. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this. So, playing with the warrior, very good single target damage. I'm assuming this is an arms warrior. Yep, I see. Yep. So, I would say that really good single target damage. You, the strategy in twos is similar to solo shuffle, where it, it basically uptime is the only thing that matters. Just do damage. I would recommend having, if you're, this demon hunter is hitting your warrior, have your warrior hit the priest. Because if the, your warrior is hitting the priest and the demon hunter is hitting him, your warrior is hitting both of them. So that's Blur from the demon hunter, stun on you. Um, <clears throat> immediately, we have a port down. Are we out of range of our port? I'm looking to see if we're out of range. It really feels like... <clears throat> I swear, I have a sixth sense for this. I feel like we're out... Yeah, we are. We're out of range of our port right now. Uh, what PvP talents are we playing, by the way? Let me just take a look real quick here. Versus demon hunters, I would recommend eminence. Okay. Don't play disarm versus demon hunters. No matter what MMR, I don't play Disarm versus Demon Hunters because they can backflip out and it basically dispel the Disarm off themselves, whether they do it on purpose or not at lower MMR. It doesn't matter. I feel like you don't get a lot of use out of Disarm versus Demon Hunters <clears throat> unless you Disarm them in meta. Uh, so I would recommend Peace Weaver is fine. 
Peace Weaver is fine. Uh, Zen Sphere, really good in twos, so I don't mind that either. I would drop Disarm for Eminence just because they're going to have a hard time killing your warrior, so it makes you the easiest kill target for them, and the less uptime they have on you, the better. <clears throat> so yeah, we definitely out of range of report, which again, try not to do. Even if this Demon Hunter wasn't going you, they could stun Fear you. And stuff like that if the priest was close, so I'm just saying saying that, you know. Um I beam on you, great in cap on the I beam. Rop on yourself, paint sub on the priest as well. Nice kick from your warrior. Careful when I don't know how this I don't know how this fear missed you. No clue how this fear missed you. Uh but <clears throat> recommendations versus priests, don't roll into them when they have fear. That's it. Um, I don't see that we're tracking any cooldowns, which is fine. Everyone's UI is different. Track whatever you want. I if it works for you, it works for you. I would recommend tracking some CC, um, especially, you know, fears from priests are pretty important to track. So <clears throat> the fear somehow didn't hit you, but I would recommend if you ever, ever are playing against a priest, don't roll in on top of them. Because if you don't roll in on top of them, they really shouldn't hit you. Um, yeah, we are playing two set, so that's kind of nice. The Chi Harmony goes on you. Velp Miss on the Warrior is really good. Your Warrior is in Battle Stance right now. So let's keep that in mind. He's going to be taking a little bit of damage. That's also Hunt. That's Rally from your Warrior. Yulon from you. Um, and we can just crank it. Well, I don't know. Don't, we don't need to freak out right now because this Demon Hunter is the only range kick and he isn't even close to you. So just focus on healing right now. Rally from your Warrior is good. The Chi Cocoon comes out from your Yulon. And I would just spam healing right now. What I would do is I would Renewing Mist to get the Chi Harmony on your Warrior and then just spam and like Darn and Belt Mist out. I, I guess Cocoon is fine, but you could have definitely greeted it just a little bit more just because, again, they only have one kick. Fear misses on you again. Nice Disarm from your Warrior on the Demon Hunter. Incap on the Priest is really good, especially since he has no Trinket. Um, and what, what I want to see is what... Okay, good. Nope. You have Zen Spheres out, which is really, really nice. So really good job getting your Zen Spheres out. Try to keep one on your Warrior as well. So we're doing a great job of keeping our Zen Spheres up. That's Rapture from the Priest. Meta from the Demon Hunter. Great Disarm here. It is half because your Warrior did Disarm, but that's fine too. Um, If he knows to backflip out, it'll get rid of the Disarm, but that's fine. Great job with Zen Spheres. Disarm on your... Or Stun on your Warrior. Still have Parry. Still have Revival, which is really good. And we still have Rop, which is, again, a really good cooldown. Again, we are kind of out of range of our port still, so be careful. Because right here, this positioning is just a little bit awkward because... I would highly recommend your warrior to hit the priest when the demon hunter is hitting him, just because your warrior can cleave both. And if this demon hunter tries to swap to you in a stun, you he can kind of kill you. So good. We're still out of range of port. Um, we still have parry. We don't need to greet it. You know, it's twos. You, you'll get it back for sure. Um, good healing from you as well. And I think overall we're doing a pretty solid job right now. Zen Sphere is still up on the warrior or the demon hunter, which is fantastic. No trinket from either of them. So, oh, also, what I would recommend when you're playing with a warrior in twos is to play Song of Chiji if you don't think you're going to get kicked or, like, interrupted on it. It's also good. You don't have to. The rep's, rep's pretty solid. Good in-cap here on the priest. Do we have sweep? We sweep in one. Oh, they're stacked up? Kill. No. Oh, that's unfortunate. Nice kick on the priest. Another walk from the demon hunter. Oh, they have nothing. Nice. I would get a follow-up sweep. Beautiful. Double sweep. This is exactly what I'm talking about, by the way. You, we get a pain up from the priest, and the demon hunter is taking damage at the same time. So you're able to cleave both targets, and it makes the priest use way more mana. <clears throat> um, so just be careful, though. I don't think he, I, the priest probably has fear at, at you know at some point, but disarm the demon hunter there. Um, be careful. Big and cap on you. Uh, we do have Yulon as well. That's Elysian's decree, um, and that's a hunt. Yeah, so. This mostly, honestly, I because with Mistweaver, the thing about Mistweaver is one mistake. And I think it's just honestly, I think it's just over. And I think the mistake this game is is this right here. So we 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 do get incapped, which is fine. But your demon, your warrior is at like what, like forty percent ish, and we press Yulon, which is fantastic, by the way, fantastic. You could also, by the way, little trick, you can immune the hunt um, if you pl play your Peace Weaver. So just keep that in mind. It was a little, I'm a little late on it too. So um, <clears throat> like noticing the hunt. So it was kind of hard. I think you're on the GC as well. Um, but I don't think we had a life cocoon here. Like Yulon is fantastic. What I would do is I would put a, a renewing mist out to get the two set, the Chi Harmony. And then just, you have an envelop mist right here from your TF Serenity, which is fantastic. And then I would just spam heal. 
Yeah, and then you, I would also trade Revival because what, what you want to do on a Mistweaver or any healer in general is you want to line up your cooldowns with a DPS's burst cooldowns. So, like, for example, the Hunt is roughly a minute and a half cooldown. You know what else is a minute and a half? Your Restoral. So that you kind of want to line up cooldowns with other DPS cooldowns. Um, so Restoral works really well. I mean, Life Cocoon does work with it too, but Life Cocoon is more like you know, like last last ditch effort. So what I would just say is try to restore and then use your extra he just healing because they have no kicks, right? The Demon Hunter is too far away to kick you right now. So you can just spam heal. It's also a really good rally from the Warrior. I guess Life Cocoon's okay, but then uh, it also comes down to positioning a little bit here because we do get like stacked and this positioning is really awkward. I don't think it's anyone's fault. It's just sometimes this is how games happen. Uh, but the Warrior stacked on top of you and is like running towards you and it, I... Listen, a DPS at every MMR do this. It drives me insane. It drives me insane. I don't know why they want to stack on top of me. I know we're spamming life. Like you had a life cocoon, right? But <clears throat> I would just say, try to create your life cocoon a little bit more. I don't think it was a bad life cocoon, but in hindsight, just try to create it a little bit more, especially when there's no kicks close to you where you could just spam heal. But I think overall, I think you did fine. Um, and then also don't run into priests either because normally priests can't heal you if or they the priests can't fear you if you don't roll into them so um <laughs> nice fantastic yeah really really great game here um <clears throat> eminence disarm peace weaver is probably what i would run um if if you want to be a little bit extra you could technically run dematerialize but they're probably just going to try to kill your warrior name of the game here is to try to get one of them keep one of them in combat but they have like four advantages between all of them so sap on your warrior oh they open you which is a little weird especially since we're not playing trent see yeah trinket cocoon is probably not what you want to press here because <clears throat> first of all this is only one rogue um it is sepsis it is flag but i don't see secret techniques and yeah and we also have restoral so First of all, getting trained. You also have two stacks of healing elixir. So Trinket Cocoon is a bit overkill here. It, it is a little bit overkill. I would have probably tried to greet it just a little bit, like just a tiny bit, just because you. I would be more afraid for your warrior than anything else. As long as your warrior doesn't trick, it's fine. Um, But yeah, I probably would have just restored. Oh, ooh, yeah, okay. Big overlap here. Big, def, the last two spells that you want to overlap are Restoral and Life Cocoon because Restoral you could use while stunned and you're playing Peace Weaver <clears throat> which is really important because they do have magic damage um, you know the Shadow Blades is shadow damage it is magic damage it makes you immune to that damage not all of it but <clears throat> a good amount of it um, I think it just right now I'm just not going to harp on it too much Trinket Cocoon is probably overkill here I would just what I would do is I would greet it just a little bit. I mean, we're a little low right now. Our, our healing elixir should proc kind of soon. I mean, we're pretty close at 40%. Um, and then I would have probably pressed Restoral instead of Trinket Cocoon because they haven't blinded you yet. And, and then we also press Restoral. I mean, I get it. They just shadowy dueled your warrior, so maybe it's actually not bad, but he does parry at the same time. So, yeah. Good stun here on the rogue. Nice rop. Beautiful rop here. Blind on you. Hopefully your warrior can keep one of in combat. Oh, yeah, that's that's kind of uh, the name of the game. I guess neither of them have Trinket, which is nice. Oh, God. Why do people play this, man? It's so annoying. It's it's so freaking annoying. If you can get one of them out, it would be really good. I would throw... By the way, I would throw this envelopment out. When I play against Rogue Mage in twos or threes, um, I, do not be afraid to just burn your mana because mana really isn't... You'll, you'll regen your mana while you're in CC. I would start burning your enveloping mist mana on your warrior right now just because i mean the extra healing is gonna be nice when you get cc like sapped but that's what i would do just start spamming it like you definitely want statue channeling as well that way you're getting stacks of common coalescence zen's fair and is nice they're really gonna play this man no shot no shot they really okay they sap your warrior. Does your warrior Zerker rage it? Or is he sitting it? 
Looks like your warrior sits the sap. He could Zerka Rage Bladestorm, probably, if he has it. Maybe not. I don't know. He has Fear, though. If your warrior can stay alive, he can Fear. Um, sap on you. We're looking for a Bladestorm from your warrior if he has it. Okay, he doesn't have it. Sap on you is a waste. Oh, okay. Nice Stormbolt. Oh, my God. That's a really good Stormbolt from your warrior. Um, he also has Fear. Also has Fear. We have Yulon coming up. We have Life Cocoon. Trink in 15. So this this team, I would sweep right now, by the way. I would sweep. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a little scary. Sepsis is very scary. Um, good sweep. Good fear. Good, good. Careful not to get kicked. You got a precog? Free cast. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, no. Don't try to juke right now. Nice evasion, evasion from the rogue. You get the juke right here. Fantastic juke, by the way. Five seconds. You're free casting right now. You're not, you're not doing anything besides casting right now. What I would do is I would... You have Trinket in three. I would probably just spam heal yourself. And if it gets a little dicey, I'd probably use four proof if you have it. Dampen Harm is also good. Life Cocoon is an overlap, but it get, keeps you alive. Good Rop here. You Spinning Crane Kick as well. Oh, dude. You know what? Here's the thing is that it's, it's fine because you have Trinket back and that's okay. So let's see. Let's see where the rogues are hiding out. Oh, God. Do I hate rogues so much, man. <laughs> oh, we got ice on the warrior. All right, so since we didn't get the rogues out, what we're trying to do is I'm trying to look at your cooldowns. You have Trinket, you have Restoro, and you have Fort Brew. So if they go you, I since we don't play Eminence, I would probably say hold off on cooldowns, but Restoro is really good. And then you want to save your Trinket if they go your warrior, uh, especially with Blind. I feel like they're going to Blind. That's Eyes. Eyes is really terrible. I hate. I wish they would update it so it actually showed nameplates, but let's peek the achievements a little bit. All right, Rogue opens up. They do have their Trinkets now. That's Trinket... Okay. <laughs> Dude, I hate rogues so much, man. All right. Uh, we definitely want to go the one that has no trinket by. Ain't no alibi is the rogue we want to be killing. A hundred percent. Got no, both, both of them got no trinkets now. Um, we restore is good. Nice parry from your warrior as well. Nice drop. Stun on you. We do have trinket. We also have four brew. Okay. Don't have focus T there. And they kill us. I, see, I, I feel like we're trying to get to life cocoon. Um, nice four brew as well. Oh my god, yeah, good, good. Good life cocoon on you. Not bad. The rogue probably has to have nothing, right? Trinket, give me a Todd, please. Kill this rogue. Thank you. Oh my lord. Yeah, so there was a lot. This is one of those games, by the way, skill cap and Mistweaver is learning how to stay alive. So it is very, very hard. And it takes a lot of practice. But overall, really good job surviving here. I the big what what would have made this game ten times easier, by the way, is just go eminence. I don't think you also press Zen Sphere much this game. It just drop Zen Sphere when you need to focus on staying alive. So definitely just use your port. Um I would have went disarm, peace weaver, and eminence just because it's double rogue. Oh, they have nothing but stuns. They can only kill in stuns. Um but yeah, the biggest overlap was this part right here. Overlapping life cocoon, trinket, and restoral. Try to use your Restoral first. You could use it in stuns, especially if you're scared for yourself. Great Rop on the Warrior as well. That was in Shadow Duel. Fantastic Rop here. Great parry from your Warrior. Overall, really good game. I mean, there's, there's really not a whole lot you can do for Stubble Rogue. You know what I mean? So just a really good job staying alive. Try not to overlap too much. Play Eminence. It makes these games go 10 times easier. But I'm glad you guys got the win because I hate Rogues. I, I'm a little biased. I hate Rogues. I really do. Um, Good, good, good. What do we got? Peace Weaver, Eminence, Disarm. Um, yeah, this is good. This is good. Uh, you, you potentially you could drop Peace Weaver for Zen Sphere, just because there really isn't a whole lot of magic damage here, right? It's mostly priest damage that's magical. I don't think warriors have any magic damage, so I think technically you could probably go drop that for Zen Sphere. But uh, the shorter cooldown on Restoral is really really nice. Um, good job getting a port up. Let's get a statue down. Beautiful. Start casting. Fantastic. Um, get those renewing mist out when you can. Good. I see two sets already on the warrior. Paint subs on the warrior already. Uh, that's avatar. So we want to instantly disarm here if we're playing disarm. I think I, we are playing disarm. Let's get a disarm. That's avatar. Nice disarm from your warrior. Probably maybe going to trinket. They always do. Great disarm on the trinket here. You are feared. Let's see. We, we could greet this because there's about two seconds left on disarm. About a second and a half. Uh, let's see what happens here. We have Rally, we have Parry, we have Fear, Trinka, Coon, and Parry. It happens. It happens. I mean, I would have tried. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like the disarm is pretty good. I guess just Parry from your Warrior, but yeah, I get it. Um, we also don't get much healing out during um, 
life cocoon, which is a little rough just because uh, we port into fear. So we might get half feared here. Penance from the priest. Nice storm bolt on the priest as well. We do have restore all fear. Warrior probably just Zerka rages it, so it doesn't really do much for the warrior. This is going to be a full fear. Wow, full fear on you. Uh, the warrior's hitting at you. You also have a... Yeah, good. Okay, you have a bleed on you too, so you should be okay. Colossus smashing you too. Uh, this is warrior cooldowns. Do we have Rop? No, we don't. I was going to say you could Rop the warrior off the edge. But ultimate penance as well. I, I guess technically you could revival this damage because um, you are playing Restoral. So that could work as well. Um, <clears throat> overall, doing a really good job surviving here. Uh, I just, I found, when I did some Tuesday the other day, I just found out like I just oomed to Priest now, which is kind of insane. Good incap here because he's Zerka Rage, your Warrior Sphere. What's your Warrior doing? <laughs> okay, let's get somewhere. Okay, he's Battle Stance. Okay, Spartan Or. Let's stop running at the walls. Okay. Um, good, good, good. Renewing Mist. Okay. Disarm on the Warrior is fantastic. Blade Storm as well from your Warrior. Root on you. Be careful. Here comes the Fear. So what we're going to try to do here, what I would like to see is just port the Fear. <clears throat> really, It would be really, really helpful, um, obviously. Unless the Warrior is hitting you, the Warrior kind of is hitting you. You have Dead Suns on you. You got a Slow on you. Fear. Oh, we have Precog. Oh, hell yeah. Insane. Good. I didn't even notice this. Let me see. Great Juke on the Warrior here. I didn't even notice that. Good. So this Priest Fear is, is useless. Free... Take advantage of your precog. Take advantage. Don't you don't gotta juke. You don't gotta do nothing. Free cat. Like right now, what are we doing? I, whenever you have precog, take advantage of that. Of, of those few seconds of freedom that you could free cast. Fear on you. No trinket. No parry. We have rally, which is good. I'm, so what I'm trying to see is what cooldowns do we have off of this fear. We have restore. We have life cocoon. We have Yulon. We have a lot. Okay. Um, we also have nine stacks of manatee. So let's try to use those. That's life cocoon. Um, which is, is Avatar, which is fair. Yep, good, good. We don't have Disarm. Also, what I would recommend is if you, when you Life Cocoon, check how many stacks of Manatee you have because you're, whoever you Life Cocoon isn't going to be dying, right? So either so the team's probably going to have to swap, which takes some time. So in the time where that team is swapping, trying to figure out what to do, Life Cocoon, or <laughs> Manatee. Manatee during your Life Cocoon. Because uh, right now you can just do Channel 10 stacks of manatee here. Uh, try to rob this dome if you can. Sweep is okay, but we do sweep in the dome, which is what you don't want to do. It's also DR on the warrior. So it's a good idea to get the double sweep for sure. Like you, whenever you can get a double, triple sweep, do it. Uh, but the warrior is DR'd and there's also a dome up. So it doesn't get that much value. Uh, ideally, what I would do right now, because dome is up, you just play a little defensive. You, your warrior can do whatever he wants. Your warrior can go balance stance. We don't care what the warrior does. But for you specifically, I would be channeling my manatee right now, staying far away because they're trying to recover right now. We're probably not going to get a kill right now because dome's up. And then once dome is down and the warrior's off DR, then you go in for a leg sweep. So now we get the double leg sweep. It's DR on the warrior, uh, which is okay. Roots on you. It also puts us in a little bit of an awkward spot just because the warrior, the priest can probably fear us. He's actually rooting us and running away so we don't actually mind that flash heal from the priest spam healing rop okay nice fear nice fear warriors sitting that too oh so was the priest in cap off that fear too if you can nice drop fear on bro what fear is so inconsistent how does this fear hit you nice drop i mean i guess it was kind of middle of the dome again si similar to the first game don't try to push in on priests when they have fear available because that's the only time they're going to get it the only time priests don't have enough mobility. Great disarm here on the parry. Really good disarm on the warrior. The priests don't have enough mobility to CC you. Good job kiting. Good in-cap here. Hell yeah. Warbreaker from the warrior. I don't think we have disarm for this. So we're kind of just going to have to heal through it. Or we're probably just going to have to heal through it, actually. Uh, Yeah, nice sweep here. See? It, immediately, you get the trinket from the warrior. It's fantastic. Good work. Um... And then precog and you is amazing, amazing as well. Um, fear on you is gonna it's gonna get awkward. We have life cocoon, and we have Yulon in five. So let's see what we do. We also have ten stacks of manatee. Priest is looking for something. I don't know what priest is looking for. I would have went for an incap on. Oh, like twift song. Oh, I was gonna say this is why I like playing song. Gg sweep here though. No, nope, no sweep. That's okay. Stun on you. No priest. No fear priest. No fear from the priest. Um, Warbreaker, so that's when you want to disarm, by the way. Like what I said in the first game, where you're looking for cooldowns that you want to line up with other DPS. Warbreaker is on a 45 second cooldown. Your disarm is on a 45 second cooldown as well. So, 
try to line those two cooldowns up. As soon as you see Warbreaker from the Warrior, I would try to disarm. Obviously, if they're Blade Storming, you can't disarm. But other than that, I would I would disarm for sure. Uh, we do have Sweep in 9. We have Incap for the Priest. So that should be a pretty good quick kill window. Good disarm. Looking for Incap here. That's Feather from the Priest trying to get away. Love this. He's just he's just bogging himself out. Go for an Incap. Sweep. Every, yeah, nice, nice, nice. Good kill on the Warrior. Good kill on the Warrior. Yeah, really good work here. Only, only... Weird part was the double sweep was a good idea during the dome, but just try to wait until after the dome. That's pretty much it, though. I mean, outside of that, also be careful because this does overextend you, and then the priest gets I, essentially like a free fear on you. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but good job keeping Mystic Touch up as well on the DPS or on whoever you're worried sitting. Really good work. Uh, oh, we trinket here. Yeah, so we push in for a sweep. We get a half sweep on the warrior, and then... As a result, we have to trick it, right? So it kind of sucks. I would have probably maybe saved Tiger's Lust for like the root, maybe. But overall, yeah, good game. This is a really good game. Fantastic work here. Uh, I think this is a really, really good comp. I think playing with like, I think playing twos is really good uh, for learning. So play twos, pick a good melee DPS. Oh god, let me uh, let me take a deep breath here. All right, we have Ass a Rogue Preservation Evoker, which uh, absolutely sounds miserable. To play against so what are we looking for here we're playing we got to be playing peace weaver got to be playing eminence because i really think that they can do goes on you and then the third one can be zen spheres or disarm i don't know how important disarm is truly versus assassination rogues um zen spheres could be good as well but lord uh, all right wait what what, what, what will those pp down let me see let me take a peek at that real quick let me see what we got going on here. Uh, yeah, perfect. Okay, good. That's exactly what I would run. Fantastic. All right. Let's see what we got here. Because let me tell you something. I'm already not enjoying this game. All right, let's get Renewing Mist on the Warrior. Yulon is fine. You want to get your Renewing Mist out for the extra 15% healing. Even though it got nerfed, it's still really good. That's Trinket from the war from the Rogue on that Storm Bolt or Stun. Uh, so that's a pretty good start. Um what I would recommend that you, that you start learning to do is when you see your DPS stun the kill target, try to get an in-cap on either the healer, um, if we're not killing them, or the off DPS, if we're not killing them. Whoever's not getting killed, try to go for an in-cap. But no fine Shroud is up on the on the um, preservation, so we can't do that. Uh, kick here. You can definitely kick the Sleepwalk. Uh, it's fine. It's yours with Blind, so it's not terrible, but we do Trinket Cocoon. Uh, DR Blind on you. <sighs> don't mind that. We do not mind that. You know what? The, 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 the reason I don't mind that, the reason that Trinket was a little rough at first was because he had blind, but the, because the rogue DR blind immediately off of it, you basically just Trinket and blind, right? Essentially. So, because now your Trinket's like the same cooldown as it, and he was like cocoon, so I think you're good. Um, so, not a bad start. DR stun on the preservation. I don't think you... I don't know. Unless this preservation can't kite, I think you have to kill a rogue. Sadly, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I don't think the preserv preservation evoker will die unless it's like super light dampening. Um, you want to dispel that debuff, by the way. That was, was that, what, what was that? Was that, was that fire breath from the evoker? Yeah. Um, unless he missed it on your warrior. Oh no, you want to dispel this dot. It's, it's not, it's not crazy, but if you dispel the dot, it just stops some of the preservation broker damage. And there's not really much else to dispel versus this, so why not? Good crackle there. Rop on that disintegrate is really good. Disintegrate does a ton of damage. Um <clears throat> what we're looking for as far as goes, by the way, stun on the rogue, and cap the healer. This is also why I kind of recommend playing Song of Chiji when you're playing with a warrior, because I feel like Stormbolt in cap, like Stormbolt on the DPS, in cap on the healer, it just isn't enough to get a kill. So good Stormbolt. Oh, I don't mind the Stormbolt. Get an in-cap off that. Nice division from the Rogue. Get an in-cap on the Impress. Beautiful. Fantastic. That's actually good. I don't mind that. Um, if you could... It, next go, if you could leg sweep the Rogue. Great disarm here on that step. The Rogue wanted to do, I think, a swap to you. Be careful, though, because we're out of range of report. So, again, it's similar to the first game. You don't, you never really want to outrange report ever. Um, whether it's to, you know, avoid CC, avoid damage on you. Um, Living Flames coming in to do damage on your Warrior. Uh, be careful because the preservation might kick you. You want to keep your renewing mist up right now. Definitely keep your renewing mist up. Good job using your manatee stacks. Really good. No flying shroud here. That's okay. Sleepwalk on you. Rogue steps to you, uh, which is uh, kind of odd. I don't think. Oh, nice. Life cocoon. 
I don't mind that life cocoon either. Really good. Nice port here. Charge on the rogue. Um, I would wait for this rogue to... Yeah, port, port. Use your second port right now. You have escape from Yaudi. Yes, this is really good if you do it. Because what you always want is you want your second port to be outside of a stun. So you get the, the cooldown reduction from your eminence. So if you can get a second port, use your port. Oh, please. Okay, that's okay. We don't. Get, so now our port is a 35 second cooldown. Could be a 25 second cooldown. That's okay. Um, but just remember, keep that in mind. Disarm the rogue. Uh, not really necessary there because no, what I would do is I would wait for your warrior to be stunned to then disarm. I mean, maybe if we're trying to pre-disarm like a CC on you, good sweep here on the on the preservation. That's fine. But I would say normally, if you can, shadow step from the rogue here. Let's see what we got. I would disarm when you see kidney shot. Fear on the preservation is really solid here. Uh, shadow step to you again. I don't know why the rogue keeps stepping you. I, I genuinely don't know why. No clue. Um, he's not has not stunned you <laughs> at all. Uh, blind on you. Maybe he was trying to. I don't know. I don't. Know. <clears throat> Fire breath. I would just. Uh, oh, it's this dot right there. Oh, let me let me quickly show you. Um, it's this. Oh, please. This dot right here. Um, just try to dispel it from the fire breath from evokers. It does a good amount of damage. So, anytime you could like, you know, make any damage less, I would do it. Good restore there as well. Um, manatee, good. Or, sorry, uh, Chi Harmony from New Mist is good. Uh, Sleepwalk is going down on you. Gouge, Sleepwalk, it's DR because of Blind. Disarm on the Rogue is really good. We have Incap coming back up in five. I'm trying to see when. Oh, oh, yeah, the Rogue Evasion there. Or had. Yeah, Rogue has a. You can't see it. This That's what sucks slightly about your ui is the rogue did have evasion up but it swapped because of smoke bomb so i would recommend getting like some kind of you know lightweight mid like cooldown tracker like you know on the bar just track the major defensive major cc uh like evasion and smoke bomb that way you can see if it's active because now you like sweep and it's dodged because the rogue has evasion up but you can't tell right because smoke bomb um, but we do get it on the preservation and nice drop out of smoke bomb. So essentially the rogue waits in smoke bomb there, which is really nice. Um, good shock wave from your warrior as well. Shadow step to you again. These shadow steps are really weird. I'm not gonna lie. We kind of want to reset port though, because your port's kind of in the middle of the map right now. I don't mind these swaps to preservation. Um, mostly because it feels like they're kind of uncomfortable with kiting. It seems like this preservation is. Like, I don't think, yeah, I don't think they're training that often. Um, sleepwalk on you though we do have trinket cocoon if we have to but i think that just breaks to the rupture bleed which is really nice um what i'm looking for now is we want to reset port and we have 12 stacks of manatee is what i what i'm kind of worried about mana wise i don't think this this uh preservation has, has used um emerald communion once so the preservation does have mana more mana than what it looks like uh that was a dr stun we definitely don't want a dr stun here this is i this yeah this is a triple dr stun so don't triple DR stun. Wait, just hold off to a leg sweep. Even though it could be good stun, I still don't think it's worth it. Fear here somehow misses on the rogue. I don't know how, um, which is really annoying. And it shows that the preservation is casting Dream Breath when he's not. So that's also weird. I find that very weird. Um, but yeah, I would 14 stacks of manatee. Probably want to ch uh, channel that. Uh, looking for what kind of CC wave in cap. Nice storm bolt on the on the preservation. And yeah, we're kind of creating good, good. There's the manatee. There's trinket from the rogue. Nice disarm on the trinket from your warrior. And we're doing a really good job of just staying alive here. Yeah. Um, stun there is fine. There, you already have so many stuns too. It's, it's kind of hard, you know. Blind on the warrior makes it seem like they kind of want to kill you. Ooh, we are playing disable. So good. Sleepwalk on you. Rogue's definitely going to break it. Stun on you. Careful. We could port off this. We also have restore. Don't freak out. Good. Good. Preservation is also super oom. So, Experience Spirit Loom, nice in cap. Tranquility. I'm actually recording this right now, but thank you. Thank you, Zoo, <laughs> for the follow. Um, I'm actually recording this. I'm not streaming. So, that, that's communion. The, the preservation is going to get mana back. Uh, but that should be the last time that they use it this game. Mostly because dampening is pretty high and it's a three minute cooldown. And this game is not going through memory. Minutes. So, I would keep pressure on the rogue here because this is evasion. So, I would definitely. Here's the game plan. Later in dampening, don't make the mistake of tell your DPS later in dampening, you'll stop the drink if this preservation goes for a drink. Your warrior, just have him keep hitting the rogue because evasion's down. 
you go in for CC on the preservation when they start to try to drink or anything like that, and you'll be fine. Because you have cooldown, you have the cooldown advantage, and they do not. We have parry. Oh, we just use <laughs> we just use life cocoon. Good port here, kind of. It wasn't LOS. Um, and we have a second port, so I would use your second port as well. Yeah, you just use your second. That's fine. You know, could be better, but that's okay. And I'd say overall we're doing a really good job. Three stacks of manatee. Oh, we just use a manatee, which is good. Um, fear on the preservation. We were looking for a, a follow up CC. We, we actually went here. We actually we we actually went here. Go for an in cap on the prez and then sweep off. Todd, that's okay. Cheat death. In cap the prez. Sweep off. Nice, good. In cap off. Win the game. In cap. Beautiful. Sounds sunny. That's fine. I think your warrior got out of CC there. I think he might have turned in there. I, I can't tell. Um, the most important thing is you still have trinket. Yeah, just have your warrior hit whoever. Don't chase. Don't chase when you're late, this late in dampening. I would just 100% focus on doing damage. Um, careful rolling out there, though. Smoke bomb. Oh. Well, that was a really unfortunate rescue because that was a smoke bomb <laughs> from the rogue. Um, we're both super oom. I mean, you're, you have more mana than them. Good in cap here. Faint from the rogue. Kill the rogue. Beautiful. Yeah, this, this, um, this game not much to report on i would say just make sure you always stay in range of your port and make sure that you always reset it after you pour it and then keep in mind you always want your second port when you're playing with escape from reality to be out of a stun that way you get the cooldown reduction so i think it happened here yeah happened here you ported right let me see good 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 rogue tries to hit you you port really good now, what happens is we don't use our second port, which is from Escape from Reality. So instead of taking advantage of Eminence, which would make your port have a 25 second cooldown, we wait out the buff, Escape from Reality buff. We don't port a second time. And it's a 35 second cooldown instead of 25 seconds, which might not seem like a big deal, which it probably isn't. But when you're in a twos or a threes and teams are actually like trying to target you, uh, that 10 seconds is very important uh, to staying alive. So just keep that in mind. That's the biggest thing I would say from there. But overall, great job keeping your, your warrior alive. Fantastic work here. Uh, what, oh my god, dude. What was it? Freaking melee hour? Not one not one caster in this two session? I better see a warlock or a shadow priest or, or a mage or something. Holy cow. All right, we got arms warrior, disc priest again. Oh my god. Okay, this warrior needs to relax. Warbreaker, instantly disarm. That's what I would do. After this blade storm, disarm. Just line up your cooldown with it. Oh, yeah, no do not for some reason it doesn't matter if disarm lands after blade storm if you disarm while blades if you press grapple weapon while disarm while blade storm is up even if there's 0.1 seconds left it's going to get immune don't know why it's super annoying but we he did immune our disarm even though i feel like it would have landed after blade storm so just yeah don't know why that's just how it is i don't know i don't work for blizzard sadly i would definitely make that change um I, I do like your warrior hitting the priest though. Keep I would say as long as if this warrior hits your warrior, hit the priest. Paints up rapture. Look at that. We're barely hitting them for 30 seconds. And we already got paints up and rapture. Keep keep hitting this priest. Oh, careful. Careful. Whatever. Mentioned a few times now. Versus priest. Shadow priest, disc priest, holy priest. Doesn't matter. Don't ever roll in when they have fear. Priest can never fear you. Okay? Just, Unless you're the one that rolls on top of them, they will never, ever, ever in a million years get a fear on you. But if you roll in like this, they'll fear you. Uh, and they'll do it for, you know, they get that free CC, which uh, can put you behind the good Zen Sphere here. Uh, it looks like we're playing Zen Sphere, Disarm, and then we Life Cocoon, you know? So as we're, since we pushed in, the the priest got a free fear, then we had the Life Cocoon, right? So... Uh, again, just make it really difficult. What you what your goal is is to just try to be as annoying as possible, make it as difficult as possible for teams to CC you. That's pretty much it. Uh, good disarm on the warrior here. I don't see warbreaker, and I don't see colossal smash, but or colossal smash. But there was a fear on you, so you got one second of freedom. That's also um, great. A penance, peace weaver immune to dis the damage from penance, so you could use peace weaver restoral during greater what is called greater penance or whatever. Ultimate Penance. So let's see what happens here. Zen Sphere, great work. Good job. Colossal Smash, Colossal Smash. Manatee as well. We probably want to press soon. We have seven stacks of it. 
That second pit stop on the disc priest, though, so that's really good. Mana wise, I think we're fairly even. We do have stacks of minutes, so we have eight stacks. Good job keeping your new missed up. Always try to keep that two set up on on whoever's taking damage as well. Warrior wants to hit you. Use Rop here. Good in cap. Good in cap. I would probably Rop too. Nice, nice root. I swear, melee don't actually expect it. It's kind of funny. Um, good, good, nice. Good healing here. No, we're doing a really good job. We have fear, parry, rally, life cocoon. We have every we have every single button. Uh rapture again from the disc priest. So I again have your warrior hit the disc priest whenever he's getting trumped by a melee. Um it's really, really, really good um to get damage on both. This disc priest is gonna run out of mana really quickly. Mana wise, we just used our mana tea, which is fantastic. We also use life cocoon here. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That life cocoon's okay to trade here. It, it saves mana, which is kind of nice. Um, Warrior swaps to you. Great port here. If he leaps or ports to you, or yeah, leaps or charges to you, I would just port again. Um, good in cap here. I would port again. Yeah, you you right here. When this warrior's looking at you after the sync cap, right here, boom. You actually have. You're off the GCD. You could port here a second time. And then make this warrior's life just miserable. But good to <laughs> we do that anyway. Disarming him here before he tries to go you. Love to swap on the warrior as he's LOS was healer. Fear on you is okay. Um, we have Yulon. We have Parry. I would probably just Parry if I was your warrior. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Good uh, sw um, reflect there from your warrior too. And I would... We don't have port, but we do have paint. We do have precog there. Again, be careful rolling in on the priest here. Good sweep here. Really good trinket as well. But they do get the fear. Uh, the warrior instantly, instantly breaks it with blade storm. Um, yeah, and I think the warrior probably has interrupt back. Uh, trinket here is fine. That's fine. Tiger's lost if you get nice port. Okay, good, good. He might leap to you. No, just swaps your warrior. Let's see what we do here. I kind of want to see sweep or uh, bang on to you. Okay, nice about missed here with Thunder Focus T. Get that redeeming missed out. Beautiful. Use that instant vivify. You got it. You got it. You got Vivacious Vivification. Where is it? Right there. You got the buff. You go for the instant vivify here as well. Go for it. You have Life Cocoon. You have Disarm. You have Life. Okay. You're a Disarm. Beautiful Disarm here. Fantastic Disarm here. Still have instant vivify though. Life Cocoon. Okay. Good fear. Priest has no trinket. Uh, do we have Life Sweep? We have Incap. Okay. We win. We win right here. This is, this, is, this is a dub right here. Go for in cap sweep on the priest. Parry. In cap. Beautiful. Give me a sweep off. Warrior's parry up. Sweep off. Nice. Good. Okay. Good CC. Uh, putting them on the back foot is really nice. And then we have port back kind of soon, I think. So we should be okay. We also have Rop. Priest is going to fear you. It's full. We have a bleed on us, though. There we go. Nice. It breaks a little bit early, uh, which is kind of nice. Let's see. Rapture from the Disc Priest. Port on you. We have 10 sacks of Manatee. We'll probably try to use that soonish. Full Sweet or Full Storm Bolt on you is okay. You're doing a pretty good job of living. It's just, damn, it just feels like we're under pressure just the entire time. Yeah, this is fine. Mana is a little tight right now. We have a 13 stacks of manatee, though. If we can find any breathing room to get, like, any stacks of manatee, I think we're okay. Okay. Nice. Got to get those stacks of manatee out, though. Yeah. We have 14 stacks of it. I just go for it. You have life cocoon. Yeah, not, right now, beautiful. exactly what I was talking about in one of the last games. You got the life cocoon out. Start channeling those that manatee. Start channeling the manatee right now. Channel it. Get that. Like, twelve. Use those twelve stack. Beautiful. Exactly what I'm talking about right now. Good. We get mana back. We have a mana uh, reduction on spells, and I think we have disarm. Yeah, disarm the warrior. Beautiful. He's probably gonna trinket it, but it doesn't matter. Um, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, this game. A lot happened this game. Uh, first of all, on this map, I would recommend porting from pillar to pillar rather than pillar to gate. Uh, just because it's just it's just a further distance and it's way more annoying for teams to hit you. Um, so I would put my port here behind this this um, this pillar. I would kite to this pillar and then just port back. It's super 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 easy. Um, the warrior only has one leap, so he's got to choose. If he doesn't go back to you, you just reset your port over here and you just keep porting back and forth. Um, two, yeah. What I would huge recommendation I would say for you is we keep 
building up our manatee charges until like 10 or 11 stacks. I wouldn't do that just because of what happened at the end here, where if you didn't have life cocoon, I mean, you did, but if you didn't, I mean, we didn't have it for a long time, right? We had all these stacks of manatee and we waited for our life cocoon. I would say what you want to do is you want to just small bursts throughout the game. So when you're, I don't know, let's say your warrior storm bolts the healer or DPS and you go for an in cap on the healer. I would go for some four or five stacks of manatee during your CC, get a sweep off on the priest and then heal when you have the mana reduction. I would try to hold off or try not to get these big, like, especially since you can get CC'd on too. I would go for four to five stacks of manatee rather than, you know, 12 or 13. But yeah, great game. Great game here. Went straight to the end, which was fantastic work. Um, really good healing. Really, really good job there. All right, what do we got here? What do we got here? Survival Hunter. All right, hey, another melee, huh? Jesus. Okay. Um, similar strategy. Really good sweep here, so he can't trap you. Good Zen, uh, Zen Sphere on the Disc Priest as well. Careful. Root on you. You're going to get silenced here. Disarm on the, in, on the Hunter is fantastic. Fury of the Eagle is some pretty big damage from the Hunter. You can in-cap the Hunter. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. And then I love swapping to the Hunter. Fantastic. Yeah, I don't mind the salt. We kind of run on top of the priest, but I feel like this hunter should break this fear. Still, though, try not to run on top of the priest. A lot of disc priest, man. DR stun on you is fine. Um, that's from the survival hunter. We're starting to freak out a little bit, though. Let's let's kind of let's get back in range of report. Let's start with that. Good fear from your warrior. Trigger from the hunter. Let's get in range of report. Oh, okay. We're very far from report. We are very we're in no man's land. Um we are on Sunday art for a little bit, like maybe two or three more, well, like maybe four or five more seconds. Good port here. Let's channel manatee. Here, here's what I would do if I, if I was in the spot. We get out of the route. Port. I would channel manatee right here. Hunters have no way to get to you unless they can target you. So this hunter, unless he disengages and like cheetahs to you, I don't think he already has it actually. Um, I would channel my manatee right now because we have six stacks. Go for the manatee. Disarm on the hunter there is a little scary. Um, especially since we're not healing ourselves. All right. I would, uh, before all this healing you just did, I would have channeled that six stacks of manatee they have right now. That way you get the mana reduction. None of them can CC you right now because the hunter just trapped. The priest is too far to fear you. And then that way you have the mana reduction. You say, man, I'm ca careful again. Good sweep, but be careful. Be care very careful. Um, you're going to have silence though. So what I would uh, recommend right here, little trick. I'll show you so you have you have explosive shot on you and you also have the scorpion sting on you if you press restore all right now you immune the silence from the scorpion sting and you immune the damage from the explosive shot because it's, it's um it's magical damage so i would just press your restore right now to get the heal on you you immune the silence because they're going to get a lot of pressure they're probably going to get your trinket from the silence because you can't do anything and uh you immune the explosive shot damage which is amazing so um Fear on you, stun on you, mind games on you. Um, we actually do a great job surviving there. Fantastic. Um, looking for maybe an expel harm. Precog. All right, free cast. Yep. Good, 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 good. Eight stacks of manatee. Keep renewing mist on yourself. We have two, always, always, always have your renewing mist charges recharging. We have two stacks right now, especially with a two set bonus. I'd get that renewing mist on yourself here. I would not focus on healing your warrior. I do that. This was a little bit of a waste of healing uh, time right here because your warrior is not in trouble. You always got parry, rally, 100% health. This hunter isn't even looking at him. He's looking at you. I would get a renewing mist on yourself here and then try to put an envelopment on yourself. Um, I would port as well. Nice drop here. Good. Incap the pre the hunter maybe so he can't swap. Maybe we just kill. That's paint sub. Nice. Good. Good. No sweep. Good. Kick. Can we get a kick on that? Nice shockwave. Good. Careful. Renewing mist on yourself here. Take the ultimate penance. Beautiful. Cocoon fear. Cocoon yourself. Okay. Priest is probably going to go for ultimate penance here, so be careful. Yeah, there it is. You could peace weaver. Oh, we don't have peace weaver. That's okay. Yeah, they just live. Parry from your warrior. I, I don't think we had to parry. Did we have to parry there? Yeah, definitely didn't have to parry there from your warrior. So that might have been a fat finger or just accidentally pressed it. I have no idea. It's fine, though. It is what it is. Good double. Oh, I love these double sweeps coming out for you. Who are we hitting? We're hitting the priest. I would hope. I think the priest is probably. Priest has no paint sub. Penance on you. Looking for maybe a Yule on here. Silence on you. We can disarm. We can incap the hunter here. Yeah. 
Survival Hunters are tough. Survival Hunters are tough. Yeah, I would say there wasn't really a turning point this game. I feel like we will find most of this game. When did we life cocoon? Let me see. When did we life cocoon? Let's see. So we definitely have port, right? Good kick here. And we have life cocoon. We also have Yulon. We also have expel arm. And we have Forper up, right? Or we just use Forper. I'd say you're doing pretty good right now. Um, we do trinket nothing. That's one thing. It, it, if you get feared and the DPS is hitting you, it's probably going to break almost instantly. So you don't need to worry that much about trinketing. Um, but we do have Expel Harm. And we do have Yulon Thunder Focus Beat. Really good combo for any time, whether you're being targeted or your team is getting targeted. Yulon Thunder Focus T, really, really good. Really, really powerful. Uh, we also have Disarm here. So I would have maybe tried to greed this a little bit. Just because, you know, I mean, life cocoon is so important. But one thing I also want to know is we do have port. And we just keep re we keep not resetting our port. So get in the habit of as soon as you port, reset it. No matter what. Like, literally, no matter what situation. Unless teams are, like, target. Obviously, if the team is running you down, like, following your port, you port back and then roll in, you're fine. But if the team, if the other team doesn't chase you, reset your port. That way, you always have your port LOS. Because this, right, this could have saved you right here, right? Um, imagine if we don't shrink it at all, right? Because this fear breaks instantly. And then we just instantly pour LOS of the hunter. We don't have to shrink it. We don't have to life cocoon. We you get to use our manatee. So just keep that in mind. Always be aware. The number when you're being targeted, first cooldown, no matter what, no matter what, should always be port. If your port is up, you're alive. That that's how I think of it. If you have port available, you're you're fine. You're, you're, if you position correct, like if you if you position on this pillar and your port's on this pillar and you position far away so that they can't, you know, harpoon to you or any anything to you, you're fine. So just keep that in mind. Always try to port first. Um, but survival hunters are tough. Like, don't get me wrong. They're, they're definitely tough. So I, I feel that. I feel that. I really do. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. It's all melee. It's all freaking melee. This is actually a very hard matchup. Very, very hard matchup here. Because the hunt, the pally has bops and you don't. It's really that simple. This game, if you lose, will simply come down to this pally has two bops and you have no bops. So <laughs> that's just how it is. Uh, the warrior, this will not go. Oh, also play eminence. Yeah, Zen Sphere is good. Like Zen Sphere is fantastic. Um, I would either you probably could have dropped disarm versus the survival hunter. Um. And played eminence but eminence is a really really good tool for misweavers so also keep that in mind but i really think this is not a winning oh careful careful out of range report now maybe get a sweep here nice disarm nice disarm really good um bop bop yeah that's, what did i say yeah bop we are not we okay let's just start let's just start here okay uh don't ever use both your ports at the same or both your roles at the same time because then you have nothing miss weavers very mobile we're very mobile we have we have roll we have tires less we've port <laughs> but don't use both your cheat torpedoes ever at the same time unless it is unless you are about to die or someone is so far away you got to get to them don't ever use both your roles at the same time what i would have recommended you do though is if i saw my warrior doing this Right here, running in to battle, straight to the enemy. I would mount, stay mounted and then put your port on one of these pillars. You always want to be close to your teammate, obviously, right? You want to be close to your melee at all times. Um, put your pillar, or put your port on one of these pillars. But this double roll here, you have no mobility, and you just use drop. You have nothing now. You you literally have nothing. So keep that in mind. And we're so far out of range of port, we have no way to get to it. Even if we wanted to port, which we're, we we want to right now, we, we definitely want to, uh, you cannot get there. Disarm uh, from your warrior is good. Um, Chi, uh, Yulon there is really solid. I like this Yulon. Double leg sweep here is really good. Might get human from one. Nah, we get no human from the warrior. Good blade storm from your warrior. Good heads up there. Um, Forbearance is on the other warrior for eight seconds. I don't think that matters though. Um, good. We don't want your Chi torpedo back, but... Uh, be careful. We get store molted. No good restoral. Fear from good, good, really good fear from your warrior there. Really good heads up fear. Um, to peel for you. Fantastic work. Um, but now we are stuck. Th this is it. This this is where like this is again like I mentioned earlier. The skill cap to Mistweaver is staying alive 
and utilizing your utility and honestly never running out. Um, always try to space out your, your mobility, your tiger's lust, your T torpedo, your port. Always, always, always try to space them out. That way you're not stuck. Like you kind of you have ROP. So I would probably ROP this this corner right here. This this pally is it's pretty obvious what he's trying to do. They're trying to kick you, but um I think he's gonna probably try to hodge you, which is also a little scary. Um we do have trinket, which is good. But let's see how this works. Sack on the warrior. Good ROP here. Um you need to get my friend, you need to get to a pillar. Is what you need. <laughs> you you gotta get to this pillar. Um, good kick. Oh, I thought we were gonna get kicked there. That's okay. Nope, nope. Gotta get to a pillar. Yeah, not this ramp. This ramp is really annoying. I would. If this pally bobs this this storm, I'm gonna be so annoyed. Okay, good, good. Port here. Okay, good, good. All right, we're creating some distance between us and the enemy team, so that's really good. Uh, looking for an in cap here. Good stacks down. Fantastic. Um, we have to sweep. Beautiful double sweep here. Kind of. Super dear. We need to wait exactly like. Oh, I, I, I do it sometimes too. Don't like. Don't get me wrong. Like I don't play per, but we're like. Oh, I mean, quite literally, like point five seconds away from having a full sweep on the warrior. Oh, and it's triple dr. That sucks. But I, I've been there, so you know, it is what it is. Uh, Warbreaker, this is what we're looking for a disarm for, hopefully from somebody that's, I think, defined favor from the Holy Pally. Root on you from the Warrior. I mean, we're getting cooldowns, which is kind of nice. Uh, nice, that's Aura Mastery from the Pally. Cocoon on you is fine. We have 10 stacks of mana. So even though you've life cocooned yourself, by the way. Also, I don't know if our, by the way, I don't think our statue is in range. So one thing also note is your, your statue does have a range on the healing. So I don't think we're getting much value. Yeah. Oh my God. Our statue's all the way over there. Yeah. Make sure whenever you reposition on the map uh, to reset your statue, whether you move LOS or you move far away, always reset your statue. Um, but this is also, even though life goes on you, always, you know, manatee when you can, whenever you get that time. Oh, dude, I hate Bob so much, but yeah, that's kind of what this matchup comes down to is uh, Bob's kind of get look now your warrior has to swap to the pally and it's just so awkward. Good rob here to get the warrior off you. Uh, maybe in cap on the no, we don't we don't want to. We actually don't have it either. Uh, we have four brew though, which is kind of nice. We do have another cheat torpedo. Okay, we're out of cheat torpedo now. Um, we do have manatee. We have tiger's lust to go to store here. Fear on you. I hate when warriors do this. It's actually such a bad fear. Really, really bad fear there. We have 13 stacks of manatee. Um, Good Tiger's Lust here. Fantastic. We have one charge of Healing Elixir as well. Uh, we want to... Okay, sweep. Okay. Leap onto you. Kicks you. <sighs> yeah, we have Yulon. <sighs> Let's see. Yeah, Yulon here. Uh, we do have Port in five. So I would maybe trinket this. No? Yulon? Yeah, nah. It's a tough matchup. The bops are just the killer here. But you, we ran... This is a um, really good example of running out of your mobility. Instead of this pillar... Uh, play around this pillar, like one of these two pillars. It's too easy for them to like, like you get away from the warrior here, right? All right, great, great job here. Great, great tiger's loss, great. Um, and then we sweep, which is again, sweep is good, but the warrior's just able to get in line to you and it just leaps you. So I would, on this map, what I found to be really good for port, if someone's targeting you, is put your port behind this pillar and then port from like this fence and then you just port back and forth and no melee can keep up with you. Not even a demon hunter. Demon hunters will even struggle to connect to you. I'm going to make a video, by the way, on like the best places to put your port on certain maps, on every map. I've been wanting to do it for a while, but I'm probably going to do it. But yeah, these games were not bad. I think actually, I think each game has like a lesson, like something you can do, like improve at, which is really nice. So this game, really good. Uh, mostly came down to you outranged your port. Uh, at the start, so the warrior, the hunter, the demon hunter was able to get some stuns on you. You could port while stunned. Even if you don't, you could just port away, but we kept that ranging it. And then positioning wise, try not to stack with the warrior. You can't help it sometimes because the warrior actually, I think the warrior stacked on top of you, which was kind of annoying. Uh, this game was really good. Um, but again, try not to overlap your cooldowns. We overlapped trinket, life cocoon, restoral. Try to just read that restoral. And then play Eminence too. I would I would definitely say play Eminence more, right? Like Zen Sphere is good, but Eminence is really good for staying alive. Um, this one really good job here, but again, don't run into priests when they have fear. You're just giving them free CC. It's just free. You know, you're gifting them free CC that you that you don't have. They don't 
they'll never get if you just stay far away and then always try to save your leg sweep for like outside you know full dr leg sweeps is really important and after you know after the domes you you know dome don't try not to sweep in dome and then try to get them full duration which would be amazing this one wasn't this one was just a good game yeah this was just a solid game here good job staying alive Oh, oh, and always make sure you reset your port or your port a second time so you get the cooldown reduction, um, which would be really important. This one, oh, try to save your manatee when you have like use your manatee when you have four like four stacks, four to five stacks. That way you not you don't have to waste more time getting more stacks. Just four to five more stacks uh, would be amazing. So try to do that. Um, but overall, this was uh, this was a good game. This was this was a nail biter, but this was a really good game as well. It's all melee too, which is crazy. This one. Um, Try to greed your life cocoon a little bit more, but most importantly, reset always. Whenever you port, always get in the habit of just resetting your port. That way, if you're ever in a situation where you have to port, you know it's behind a pillar LOS and you're safe. Always also don't roll on top of a priest when they fear because they're super, super annoying. Um, and then this one, you just ran out of mobility a lot of the time. Always try to have like one roll, you know, one charge of roll or tires lust or port available. Always try to. When you run out of that, you're just stuck. You and there's situations, some comps, you're just gonna get stuck, and it's really annoying. So do your best to try not to get stuck like that. Um, but overall, it, man, this, these were some good games. I honestly just improve at those things. You know, I know it seems like a lot, but watching your gameplay back, watch these games back, and just. It, it will help you improve so much. Also, pops are really annoying, right? Like, God, I mean, that, that was the, the uh, one of the most assigning factors in this game was just the bops. Uh, you don't have that utility. So just keep that in mind. But that is pretty much it. Great games, honestly. It, it, each game, though, each one of these games, though, you can there's like something you can improve at. So it's really good. Uh, just try to focus on improving one thing at a time. Hopefully this was helpful for you or anyone who might be running to the same issues. If you have any questions, let me know. I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And, that is it for me. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Hope you have a great holiday. I'll see you later.